It's often said that necessity breeds invention. That has never been more true for black inventors. They've had to overcome obstacles and find ways to create and innovate in the face of discrimination and racism for centuries. Despite these obstacles, they have managed to change the world for the better. So, in this video, we'll look at 10 black inventors who have had an impact on society. Before we get started I'd like to give a shout out to Alex Shugahara, you're doing great things for this channel and we enjoy having you here. Number 10 Otis Boykin Otis Boykin was born in 1920 to carpenter Walter B. Boykin, who later became a preacher. Sarah, Otis's mother, died of heart failure when he was only a year old. This would later serve as his inspiration for researching and improving the pacemaker. In 1938, Otis graduated as valedictorian from Booker T. Washington High School. He would be awarded a scholarship and attend Fisk University, where he would also work as a laboratory assistant at the university's nearby aerospace laboratory before departing in 1941. Boykin would relocate to Chicago and work as a clerk at Electro Manufacturing Company. Later, he was hired as a laboratory assistant for the Majestic Radio and Television Corporation, and in 1944, he was hired at the P.J. Nilsson Research Labs. From 1946 to 1947, Boykin returned to Illinois Institute of Technology, where he met his mentor Dr. Hal F. Ruth, with whom he collaborated on several experiments, including a more effective method of testing automatic pilot control units in airplanes. In the late 1940s, they would go into business together, opening an electronics research lab. Boykin was the chief engineer at Monson Manufacturing Corporation in the 1950s. He'd go on to work as a senior project engineer for the Chicago Telephone Supply Corporation. This is when he spent the majority of his time researching and improving the pacemaker. Boykin would sue CTS for $5 million, claiming that they had obtained a patent and attempted to take credit for the device he invented. The case was dismissed, but Boykin went on to establish his own consulting and research firm, with offices in both the United States and Paris, France. Otis Boykin would patent up to 26 devices. Electronic control devices in guided missiles, IBM computers, and the pacemaker were among his most well-known works. His most famous invention was the artificial cardiac pacemaker control unit. It used electrical impulses to keep the heartbeat regular. His burglar-proof cash register was another cool invention. The device was designed to deter theft by locking the register and preventing it from being opened during a break-in. Boykin died of heart failure on March 26, 1982, at the age of 61, in Chicago. 9. Dr. Charles Drew Dr. Charles R. Drew was a pioneering doctor and medical researcher who made important contributions to the fields of blood transfusion and blood storage. Drew was born in Washington, D.C., in 1904. He was the first African-American to graduate from McGill University's medical school. He went on to get a master's degree in surgery from Columbia University and became the first African-American doctor of medicine after writing Banked Blood, a study on blood preservation. The District of Columbia's American Medical Association only accepted white doctors, so Dr. Drew never joined. Drew's work on blood banks and blood plasma during World War II saved thousands of lives and changed the way modern medicine works. He also helped set up the American Red Cross Blood Bank and was its first director. Drew did a lot of groundbreaking work, but he faced a lot of racism because of his race. Despite this, he kept working and became a respected leader in the medical field. Drew was 46 years old when he died in a car accident in 1950. Today, his legacy lives on through the many lives he saved and the work of the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, which was named after him. 8. Elijah McCoy Elijah McCoy was an inventor and engineer who lived at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th. George and Mildred Goines, who were slaves in Kentucky and fled to Ontario, had Elijah in Ontario. McCoy went to school in Canada. Because of the Common Schools Act, schools were separated by race, so he went to a school in Colchester Township that was all black. Elijah is best known for making the lubricating cup, which made it possible for trains and steam engines to keep their moving parts oiled while they were moving. This revolutionary idea helped trains and steam engines work better and run more reliably, making them safer and more reliable for both people and goods. Elijah was also a very creative person who came up with more than 57 patents. 
He also made many other machines, such as a folding ironing board, a lawn sprinkler, and a tool for getting stones out of freshly turned soil. Elijah's lubricating cup worked so well that it was used all over the world on trains and steam engines. His idea was so popular that the phrase, the real McCoy came to mean something that was genuine or real. This phrase is still used today. People say that Elijah McCoy's oil drip invention is the source of this phrase. One idea is that railroad engineers would ask for it by name to avoid getting copies that weren't as good. Elijah would die on October 10, 1929, in Nankeen Township, Michigan. He was 85 years old. 7. Dr. Percy Julian Dr. Percy Julian, a leading chemist and civil rights activist who changed the way synthetic hormones and medicines are made. James and Elizabeth Julian brought him into the world in 1899 in Montgomery, Alabama. Both of his parents went to what became Alabama State University and got degrees there. Julian had a hard time getting an education and getting a job because of his race. Even so, he went to DePauw University for his bachelor's and master's degrees in chemistry and then to the University of Vienna for his PhD. In the 1930s, Julian and his team at Glidden Company were able to make the hormone progesterone. This was a huge step forward for the industry of hormone replacement therapy. Later, he made other hormones and medicines, such as cortisone, which is used to treat things like arthritis and allergies. Julian was a strong supporter of civil rights and worked to remove barriers for African Americans in the sciences. He was the first African American chemist to be inducted into the National Academy of Sciences, and he won many awards for his work, including the National Medal of Science. Dr. Percy Julian's groundbreaking work in the field of synthetic hormones and medicines had a big impact on the healthcare industry, and his commitment to breaking down barriers for African Americans in the sciences is an inspiration to us all. Julian would die in Waukegan, Illinois, of liver cancer on April 19, 1975. 6. Granville T. Woods Martha J. Brown and Cyrus Woods had a son named Granville T. Woods. His mother was half Native American and his father was black. Woods went to school in Columbus, Ohio, until he was 10 years old. Even though he was black and didn't have a formal education, Woods made important contributions to the field of electrical engineering. One of his most famous inventions was the induction telegraph, a way for trains and railroad stations to talk to each other. This system made the railroads much safer and more efficient. Woods also made an electric railway motor that was used in factories and on street railways. This motor was more efficient and reliable than the ones that came before it, and it helped to change the way people got around. During his career, Woods put in for patents on more than 50 of his ideas. He was known as one of the most creative people of his time, and many of the technologies we use today are based on his ideas. Granville T. Woods may not be as well known as some of his contemporaries, but he made just as many important contributions to science and technology. His legacy is a source of inspiration for people who face problems when they try to do something new. On January 30, 1910, Woods would die at Harlem Hospital from a brain bleed. 5. Frederick McKinley Frederick McKinley Jones was an engineer and inventor who changed the transportation industry. Jones was born in 1893 in Cincinnati, Ohio. He started out as a mechanic. He saw right away that the transportation business needed new ideas. Jones came up with a number of patents, including a way for trucks and trains to automatically keep food cold. This made it possible to ship perishable goods safely, which changed the food industry. Jones also made a portable x-ray machine that the military used in World War II. Jones got more than 60 patents for things he made during his life. He was also the first African-American to be chosen to join the American Society of Refrigeration Engineers. In 1961, Frederick McKinley Jones would die in Minneapolis from lung cancer. 4. Benjamin Banneker Benjamin Banneker was a scientist, astronomer, and mathematician who lived in the 18th century. He was the first African-American to do these things. Born in Maryland in 1731 to freed slaves Mary and Robert Banneker, Banneker taught himself and started making his own astronomical instruments at a young age. He used these to make the first almanac by a person of African descent, which included calculations about the stars and predictions about the weather. 
People used and respected Banneker's almanacs, and well-known people of his time, like Thomas Jefferson, took notice of him. In addition to his work as an astronomer, Benjamin Banneker was an outspoken opponent of slavery and racism. He wrote to leaders of the movement to end slavery, and he even wrote to Thomas Jefferson, who was Secretary of State at the time, to debate with him about slavery. Banneker's legacy keeps inspiring and influencing people who work for equality and scientific progress. Benjamin Banneker likely died in his log cabin on October 19, 1806. 3. Louis Latimer In 1848, Latimer was born into a family of former slaves who were African Americans. Even though being a person of color made things hard for him, Latimer was determined to do well in the field of engineering. He taught himself how to draw machines and went to work for the U.S. Electric Lighting Company as a draftsman. Latimer got a patent in 1881 for making an improvement to the electric lamp that made it work better and last longer. This invention helped make it possible for people to use electricity to light their homes and businesses in a big way. Even though Latimer did a lot of good things, he faced a lot of discrimination at work and in society as a whole. He didn't get many chances or praise for his work because of the color of his skin. Even though he had to deal with these problems, Latimer worked hard and made many other important contributions to the field of electrical lighting. He was a real trailblazer, and his work still inspires people today. He would die when he was 80 years old. 2. Garrett Morgan Garrett Morgan was born in Claysville, Kentucky, in 1877. He was the son of Sidney and Elizabeth Morgan, who had been slaves. He was the seventh child out of a total of 11. Morgan first worked as a man who fixed sewing machines, but he soon switched to making new things. In 1914, he got a patent for the safety hood, a gas mask that firefighters and soldiers in World War I later used. In 1923, he got a patent for the traffic signal, which was an early version of the lights we use today. This idea helped make traffic flow better and cut down on car accidents. Morgan's idea was so popular that he sold the rights for $40,000 to the city of Cleveland. He also started making the devices and selling them in other cities, like New York and Chicago. Morgan was a leader in his community and was very involved in the civil rights movement. He was also an inventor. He was a member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People the NAACP and used his money and power to help African Americans live better lives. Garrett Morgan died in Cleveland, Ohio, on August 27, 1963. People are still moved by what he did, and his name is remembered for what he did to improve safety and traffic management. 1. George Washington Carver Carver's parents, Mary and Giles, were enslaved on a farm in Missouri. They were both sold away when Carver was just a baby, which was very sad. Despite this difficult start, Carver was determined to succeed. He worked hard to educate himself and eventually earned a degree in agricultural science from Iowa State College. Carver is best known for his work with peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soybeans. He made a lot of different things from these plants, like paint, soap, and even gasoline. Carver's work revolutionized the way these crops were used and helped to improve the lives of many farmers and their communities. On January 5, 1943, he passed away. Carver's work continues to inspire scientists and inventors all over the world, so his legacy lives on. All of these people made important changes in different fields, and their work has had a lasting effect on society. Most people know Otis Boykin for his work on the pacemaker, a device that helps control the heartbeat. Dr. Charles Drew made important contributions to the fields of blood transfusion and blood storage. He also helped set up the American Red Cross Blood Bank. Elijah McCoy is best known for his lubricating cup, which made it possible for trains and steam engines to keep their moving parts oiled while they were moving, making them more reliable and safer. Racism and discrimination made things hard for these inventors, but they kept going and made important contributions to society. Thank you for watching. We hope you had fun watching this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can watch all of our new videos. And since we're talking about new videos, make sure to watch our next one, Blocked from Opportunity, Redlining Housing, or watch a different video.